Okay, I'm, so, I'm really sorry for messing your session up, but I thought I had some, a couple of slides, and I'll try to breeze you through this, this issue, uh, which is trying to link water, sanitation, use, reuse, and gender. And you might ask why a guy from living in Stockholm uh, is going to talk about gender in Africa. Well, I was working and living in Africa until a couple of years ago, and I'm going to exemplify uh, this work with an experience from Niger, which I was uh, coordinating a project. And quickly, I'll browse you through this, I promise. Uh, because we're talking about food security and sustainability, and it's a, there's a call for reuse and recycling in all these sessions we've heard in the plenary. And to actually operationalize this, we have to see what happens if we do recycle and reuse. There is increased work. There is increased benefits. Who will benefit? Who will do the work? And how will this, how will this uh, actually uh, be implemented? And what's the impact on gender? And why are we talking about recycling? Well, we're taking out harvest, taking the food to villages, taking the food to cities. But there is rarely a loop going back to Mother Earth, which undermines sustainability, of course. And uh, is there, let's see, on the right hand side you have the urban loop taking out nutrients to the urban areas. Complex to get that back, we'll leave that for the moment. But in sub-Saharan Africa we have 64% people living on the left hand side, close to their land and smallholder farmers who can benefit from this resource reuse. And this resource reuse is, does matter, it's about 100 kilos of fertilizers per year that a family would excrete and could make use of these resources. And this is worth $80 if you want to buy them at the market, which few farm, smallholder farmers can. Applying these fertilizers does improve yields. And we have tried this in a, in a pilot project that was coordinating in Niger, uh, financed by IFAD, and SCI was also involved, and we SCI, uh, financed a gender study in the end, which I based these results on. So when implementing re reuse and resource-oriented projects, well, there is new information, and who gets access to that information? Who gets access to the trainings? Uh, women and men should have this access. The infrastructure should be adapted to women's needs as well as men's needs. And the work with maintaining the infrastructure, who will do it and who will empty it? In Niger, we saw that the, the women take care of the maintaining the latrines, maintaining the urinals, while the men do the more heavy work. And in the end, you get resources, which was before considered waste, now a resource. Who will actually benefit from this uh, new, let's say, wealth? Going all the way to indicators then, I think access to information and training, it should be equal, equal possibilities. The infrastructure that caters for women's needs is very important. The workload, who will actually take on this extra workload of treating and transporting? And who will actually gain access to the benefits and the extra income? And I think this is a part which has not been discussed, and I think it's important for the gender and co uh, gender strategy that we included, and SCI is, is willing to support developing indicators on this part of the loop, which is very neglected. Thank you very much. I didn't think I had this short, but I tried my best. Thank you.